What's up people, it's Ryan again, back with some more TV show facts that most of you seem to enjoy. This time I did it on How I Met Your Mother, one of the greatest sitcoms ever in my opinion. So let's get right into it. It's gonna be legend, wait for it, and I hope you're not lactose intolerant because the second half of that word is dairy. <laughs> no. Legendary. One. All of Lindsay Fonseca and David Henry's scenes as Ted's future children were filmed during the first season to keep them the same age throughout the series. When the kids' footage for the series finale was shot, creators Thomas and Bayes were the only people present. Fonseca and Henry also had to sign a confidentiality agreement, and the two kids honored it, even after Henry was bribed with alcohol at a bar by people wanting to know the ending. What the f is wrong with you? Two. After the show ended, Josh Radner kept the blue French horn, Neil Patrick Harris got the playbook and the gang's McLaren's booth, and the three yellow umbrellas now belong to director Pamela Fryman, as well as the creators Craig Thomas and Carter Bays. 3. By the end of How I Met Your Mother, there was no character in the central gang that the show could work without. When the prospect of having a ninth season was floated, it rested entirely on Jason Siegel, who was uncertain about returning. And as you saw, his decision ultimately defined the ending. 4. The biggest star of the show was most certainly Neil Patrick Harris, who'd been a household name since playing Doogie Howser at the age of 16. Because of that, he ended up getting paid much more than his co-stars. He made $210,000 per episode, almost doubled the rest of the cast's $120,000. When I get sad, I stop being sad and be awesome instead. 5. Colby Smulders was actually born in Vancouver. Her character, Robin Scherbatsky, was originally supposed to be from Toronto, but the creators changed it to Vancouver to match her real life persona. Oh, you're nuttier than a Tim Hortons maple log. Timmy, help! Six, in an online poll, Victoria was voted the all time favorite love interest of Ted, while Zoe was voted the least favorite. 7. As I'm sure you know, one of the show's recurring gags is that whenever somebody says a phrase that resembles a military rank, both Ted and Robin salute and repeat whatever is said as though addressing a military officer. Some countries actually still condone corporal punishment. Corporal punishment? <laughs> 8. Since the very start, the show had been building to the finale, so it's only natural that the final episode, Last Forever, would end up being the show's most watched episode, bringing in 13.13 million viewers. Previously, the most viewed episode was season 1's The Pineapple Incident, still held by many as the high watermark for the show. 9. The writers pulled from the actors' personalities to shape their characters. Robin's intense Canadian pride came from Colby Smulders, Neil Patrick Harris's skills as a magician were laced into Barney, and Josh Radner's intellectualism and Jason Siegel's obsession with writing silly songs were woven into Ted and Marshall. 500 miles and I would walk 500 more. 10. Initially, Robin's dogs were a defining part of the character, but suddenly in season 2 they were written out. Was having five canines on set proving a logistical issue? Sort of. Josh Radner was actually allergic to dogs, making the scenes he shares with them unbearable. It wasn't a clean break though. In Stuff, where Ted forces Robin to get rid of her pets, paramedics needed to be on call due to Radner's close proximity to the animals. 11. Neil Patrick Harris enjoys Red Bull so much on and off the set of How I Met Your Mother that he was given a lifetime supply of it and a mini refrigerator because of all the free advertising he has given the company. 12. Robin Scherbatsky could have been Jennifer Love Hewitt, but the Party of Five star turned down the role, paving the way for Colby Smulders. Nobody asked for your help but Trace! You are their Brandy! 13. Barney Stinson was named after a heroin peddler in the James Elroy book, LA Confidential. 14. Three of the main actors have had their significant others in multiple episodes. Husband of Allison Hannigan, Alexis Denisoff, plays Sandy Rivers, Colby Smulders' husband, Taryn Killam, plays Blauman, and David Burtka, now husband of Neil Patrick Harris, plays Scooter. <laughs> 15. There are only 12 times throughout the entire series that Barney Stinson shows up without a suit. 16. In the episode where Ted and Robin break up, there was a real life proposal. During the episode, there was a ring in a champagne glass and Robin thought Ted was proposing to her. However, the ring belonged to a man at the next table. He planned his proposal with the producers and now that couple's engagement will live forever on the show. 17. The man who plays Marshall's father in How I Met Your Mother also voices Patrick Starr in Spongebob. Alright! The inner machinations of my mind are an enigma. 18. Neil Patrick Harris knocked himself out during his audition for How I Met Your Mother during a laser tag rendition. 
19. In any scene where the gang is eating Chinese food, Barney Stinson is never able to eat using chopsticks. The only time he is ever shown able to use chopsticks is in Season 7 at the Hibachi Grill restaurant. 20. On-screen kisses can be a big ask, and all that would be made worse if the other person tastes like an ashtray, which is exactly the situation Allison Hannigan found herself in when she first started on How I Met Your Mother. Jason Siegel was a long-term smoker, making her numerous kisses with him a daunting prospect. Putting her foot down, she insisted he try and quit to make the whole ordeal bearable. Siegel originally tried to use a fine system where he'd pay Hannigan $10 for every cigarette he smoked. When that racked up a large debt, he instead decided to go cold turkey, which worked. For a year at least. Apparently due to stress he relapsed, meaning gum must have been on hand through much of the show's run. 21. Because of the numerous scenes and the quick cut nature of the show's visual style, the show is filmed without the traditional live studio audience. The finished episode is later shown to an audience and their reactions are recorded and added for broadcast. So maybe we'll do the same. Hey guys. <laughs> 22. Most of the websites featured in the show, such as CanadianSexActs.org and StinsonBreastReduction.com are real websites. Lillian Marshall's SellTheirStuff.com was created for charity and items from the show were auctioned off. 23. In most statistics Barney expresses, the numbers 8 and 3 are involved. And in one instance, when he posed as an elderly man, he claimed he was 83 years old. 83. How old are you? 31. Oh. 24. How I Met Your Mother's creators, Craig Thomas and Carter Bass, based the show on their own friendship and the shenanigans they and Thomas's wife, Rebecca, got up to while they lived in New York City. They were the first Ted, Marshall, and Lily. 25. Many episodes deal with Robin's past as the teen pop star Robin Sparkles, including her big hit, Let's Go to the Mall. That song is available on the dancing game Just Dance 3. Let's go to the mall, everybody! <laughs> 26. The opening theme song is performed by Thomas and Bay's band. The song is called Hey Beautiful and their band is called The Solids. 27. McLaren's is of course just a set in LA, but don't be discouraged, you can still visit the real bar. After spending many evenings in McGee's Irish Bar in New York while working on The Late Show, Craig Thomas and Carter Bays decided to base their show's bar on McGee's, and the owners of McGee's have really taken to it. They boast a special How I Met Your Mother drinks menu, and during its run, hosted weekly quiz nights on the show. 28. In the real world, the actual ages of the cast are all over the place. Neil Patrick Harris is 9 years older than his on-screen wife, Colby Smulders, while Jason Siegel is 6 years younger than Josh Radner and Allison Hannigan, who he's meant to have gone to college with. Funniest of all, Kristen Milioti, who plays Tracy Mosby, is only 18 months older than Lindsay Fonseca, her in-show daughter. 29. Allison Hannigan was pregnant while shooting many season 4 episodes, but the showrunners were not interested in her character also being pregnant. Most episodes used time-honored TV tricks to hide Hannigan's pregnancy, including baggy tops and giant handbags. But the episode, The Possimpable, showed Hannigan's pregnancy bump in the context of a subplot in which Lily wins a hot dog eating contest and has a comically distended stomach afterwards. After Hannigan told the showrunners that she was pregnant, Kobe Smulders discovered that she was also pregnant. Neither of the characters they play were pregnant on the show, so the costume designers had the job of simultaneously hiding the pregnancies of the series' two main female actors. 30. McLaren's Pub was named for one of the show's crew members. Carl McLaren was show creator Carter Bay's assistant until 2007, when he was promoted to associate producer on the series. 31. The series has spawned a string of books. This includes a written and comprehensive version of Barney's The Bro Code, as well as Bro on the Go, Bro Code for Parents, What to Expect When You're Awesome, The Playbook, and How I Met Your Mother and Philosophy. 32. The show inspired the spin-off How I Met Your Dad. Greta Gerwig was to front the series, which would not relate to How I Met Your Mother, except that it would share a similar sensibility and creators Thomas and Bayes. After the pilot was shot, CBS declined to pick up the series. 33. One of Hannigan's kids was slated to play Lillian Marshall's second child, but then she got some disappointing news. They fired my kid from that role. She's gonna be the baby, but producer Carter Bass was like, nope, she's too old, and she got replaced. 34. How I Met Your Mother has had some pretty impressive cameos in his time. Britney Spears, Katy Perry, Jennifer Lopez, and Jorge Garcia have all popped in to join the gang in McLaren's for an episode or two. But odds are most of the audience will have missed one of the bigger cameos, Conan O'Brien. 
O'Brien insisted he be an extra, despite the writers keen to give him a more prominent role. 35. Pamela Fryman is one of the most important people involved in the production of How I Met Your Mother. Throughout its run, she directed all but 12 episodes of the show, a mighty impressive feat when you consider the complicated time-jumping narrative most episodes employ. Only three other people directed those remaining 12. Rob Greenberg directed 7, Michael Shea directed 4, and Neil Patrick Harris directed 1. 36. Back in Season 1, Ted gets horrendously drunk and wakes up with a girl in his bed and a pineapple on his nightstand. He eventually pieces together the night, but the origin of the fruit remains a mystery. That was until the complete series DVD, which boasts a deleted scene that finally gave us an answer. It turns out the captain follows an old naval tradition of leaving a pineapple outside of his house as a symbol of hospitality, something that Drunk Ted found utterly hilarious. 37. Jim Parsons auditioned to play Barney. The future Big Bang Theory star lost out to Neil Patrick Harris, who credited the physical comedy he exhibited for landing the role. Specifically, when asked to pretend to be playing laser tag, Harris started a dive role that ended with his body meeting a chair. 38. The Have You Met Ted pickup line was actually from Bayes and Thomas's boss at Letterman. Late show writer Justin Stangl invented the pickup line. When Stangle and Bayes were at a bar, Stangle would stop a girl walking by and say, Have you met Carter? 39. Britney Spears specifically wanted to be on the episode 10 Sessions, which freaked out Bayes and Thomas, who were worried that the singer would want to play Stella, a character for whom they had big plans. Instead, she liked the role of Stella's receptionist, Abby. The episode was the most watched episode at that point, and was credited with possibly saving the show from cancellation. 40. Alicia Silverstone was originally going to play Stella, until Britney Spears got involved. Silverstone had to be replaced by Sarah Chalk after Silverstone's representatives were worried that their client would be overshadowed by Spears. 41. Kobe Smulders was actually diagnosed with ovarian cancer. During the third season, Smulders received the bad news at the age of 25 and kept it a secret from the public. Two years and several surgeries later, she was declared cancer-free. 42. Victoria would have been the mother if CBS cancelled the series early. The initial 13 episode order conveniently concluded with Drumroll Please, which introduced Ashley Williams' character. 43. Producers were worried Allison Hannigan and Kristen Milioti looked too similar. Hannigan says the whole process of finding the right actress to play the mom was very secretive and caused some suspicion around set when trailers that would never be locked suddenly were. Hennigan says she first met Kristen Milioti in a makeup trailer because producers wanted to see how the pair would look side by side. 44. Jason Siegel was actually getting tired of his role and would have preferred the series to end after the 8th season. He even poked fun at the predictable nature of his role in an interview. 45. Just in case he didn't recognize his voice, Bob Saget was the narrator for How I Met Your Mother. Oddly enough, Allison Hannigan used to babysit Bob Saget's kids. 46. Both Bob Odenkirk and Brian Cranston had minor recurring roles in How I Met Your Mother. 47. Barney's duck tie appeared in a total of 11 episodes, not enough if you ask me. 48. Episodes were generally shot over a 3 day period in Soundstage Studio 22 and featured upwards of 50 scenes with quick transitions and flashbacks. 49. Kristen Milioti had no idea what role she was auditioning for. After a 30 minute Skype interview, they flew her out to LA and even while testing for the role, she read from fake scenes that had nothing to do with How I Met Your Mother. 50. Some fans were so angry with the ending that they started a petition to CBS to redo the whole thing, leaving Barney and Robin together and having everyone live happily ever after. An alternate ending that removed the two contentious elements has hopefully somewhat pleased those fans. And that kids, is How I Met Your Mother. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a comment below telling me what TV show you'd like me to do facts on next. I still have a whole list of shows I'm gonna do, but I'm sure that I missed a couple. So yeah, just let me know and hopefully I'll get to your favorite TV show. Alright, peace!